So there's this viral article on Reddit about Kobe Bryant's work ethic. That this trainer got called up at 4.30 in the morning by Kobe to go work out with him. And the trainer claims that he's worked with Dwayne Way before, Carmelo Anthony, but he's never seen this. That he gets to the gym at 4.30 in the morning to see Kobe just drenched in sweat like he jumped in a pool. And then Kobe wants to make him do conditioning and waits for a couple hours. So then when the trainer goes to sleep after, for a few hours, he comes back to the gym at like 11 a.m. and he sees that Kobe never left the gym at all because he had to make sure that he made 800 shots before he left after he's been working out for hours and hours. Like, you think this is new to me? This is an excerpt from Shaq's book talking about Kobe. Look, they had a feud, so he says, he was so young and so immature in some ways, but I can tell you this, everything Kobe is doing now, he told me all the way back then he was going to do it. We were sitting on the bus once and he told me, I'm going to be the number one scorer for the Lakers, I'm gonna win five or six championships, and I'm going to be the best player in the game. And I was like, okay, whatever. Then he looked me right in the eye and said, I'm going to be the Will Smith of the NBA. Shaq used to say he would catch Kobe Bryant on the gym, in the court, without a ball, practicing plays. This is who he is. It's just ingrained in him to do whatever he can for a slight edge, and Shaq said, this is, this is funny looking, but you know what, it probably helped him. See, a lot of people want to, they say that they're gonna do something. Kobe Bryant does it, right? Talk is cheap, but Kobe did it because he competes with himself every single day. He wants more out of himself every single day. It's that competitive drive to be the best that carries him. It carries him through practices. It carries him through the weight training sessions, conditioning, making sure that he gets 800 shots every day carries him to work on his craft when no one is watching. Why do you think he picked the number 24 when he changed his jersey for me? I would suggest to you it was to one up MJ, right? 24 over 23. In the Olympics, Jordan had the number nine as his jersey number. Bryant, he chose 10. He said this quote, I wanna be the best. I wanna be the best, plain and simple. And to be the best, you have to win. And that's what drives me, right? He was criticized when Shaq left, that he needed Shaq to win and so forth but he stuck through with the Lakers, and he won two championships without you know, a top 50 sidekick, right? Like this Pau Gasol, that was his really the best player that he played with when he won those couple of championships. I don't even think he cracks the top 250 of all time. Even after getting beat in the finals by the Celtics a year prior, was right back at it again. And the reason is, he doesn't take it easy on his teammates. He doesn't just brush it off when they miss film sessions or they make mistakes. He is very proud at what he does, and he takes the studying aspect of the game very seriously, right? There's a lot of videos about Kobe Bryant's game looking eerily similar to MJ's. That's because he took a lot of MJ's moves and the exact positioning on the court, the same exact thing, because he studied the craft specifically because he knows that those moves work. So of course he's gonna do them. He's gonna do the same fadeaway jumper. Who better to learn from than the best? And he will chew you out if you're not on the same page as him, as he did during the 2012 playoffs when the Nuggets forced the game seven. Kobe called out Pau Gasol and Andrew Bynum. And the only one he really gave accolades to was Meta World Peace during that interview. Because as nuts as Ron Artest is, he has a certain level of intensity that he brings to the game every day. Kobe respects that. He respects that hustle, that grind. And that's what life is about. You grind, you win. He wants another title so bad. He's made it up in his mind that he's really not gonna step away from the game until he, he gets it. Muhammad Ali is like another example of this alpha male, this ultimate alpha male. He even took it so far as to let boxing destroy him. He didn't know when to step away because in his mind he had a firm belief that he could and would beat anybody, regardless if they were bigger, stronger, faster. He adamantly believed that he was the complete package and he could outbox and outsmart anyone in the ring, despite him slowing down. And he was the most competitive guy out there. He took it so far as to ru ruin a tremendous friendship with Joe Frazier. Frazier still hates him to this day. But do we remember the boxer or the basketball player that took it easy on his opponents and took it easy on his teammates? Or do we remember the ones that stirred that dogfight, right? MJ used to chew people out. MJ used to, he used to go in the locker room, Scotty Pippen tells stories about, MJ says, like, if you don't want to play, you stay in here. And he would scream at them, throw chairs. If you want to be really, really elite in this world, you're going to have to step on some toes. You're going to have to be outlandish. 
you're going to have to call out your coworkers when they slack off, your employees when they slack off. You're going to have to do things that others are afraid to do. You're going to have to be a leader, right? So Shaq and the veterans of the Lakers team that went on to 3 Pete, they used to rag on the rookies and make them carry their bags and pick up checks at the dinner table and a lot worse things that we don't know about. But it was, it was like hazing, like at a fraternity or some, of some sort. So Derek Fisher, a rookie at the time who came in with Kobe, he just minded his business and took it. And Kobe literally, he's like, I'm not taking this. And he went into the front office and told Jerry West about it. Like that takes balls as a rookie to say that what the veterans of the team and the franchise player included, like Shaq was the most dominant guy in the league at that point, right? What they're doing isn't right. That takes extreme balls to go up to the to head honcho, the boss, to do. Most of us would just take it like, like you know, Derek Fisher and the other rookies, just so we won't look like that outlier in the locker room who, who didn't pay his dues. But Kobe's not that guy. And that's why 99.999% of the population isn't Kobe Bryant. He writes this on his Facebook wall during the Olympics, the 2012 Olympics. And he says, all I can say is everything clicked tonight. Our defense was sharp, our hands were active, our feet were lively, and our shooting was accurate. We are all explosive individually, so when we find that groove as individuals all at the same time in the same game, look out. I have to stay focused, though. The next game is against Lithuania, and we can't afford a letdown. We have to keep pushing, and hopefully keep the rhythm we've been on the last few games. Two more games left, then we're on to the medal rounds. We must stay sharp. And then he goes on to talk about how watching other sports is going to make you a better basketball player. This was not even the medal round. This was after they blew out a Nigerian team by a record-setting 76 points. He's got two gold medals already, five championships, two times finals MVP at this point of his life. And he's writing about this. But that's that passion. Do you see this? This passion of the game, how intellectual he is under those circumstances, of pulling himself through to be as great as he is? He's actively thinking about how to beat the next team, while the other guys on there are just saying, like, Lithuania, like, we got them, let's go out to them. Byron Scott, new coach of the Lakers, he said, like, two injuries like that, most guys are done. Bottom line. But he sees Kobe Bryant every day working now. He's like, this is Kobe Bryant. He looks sharp. He's going to average 20-something a game. It's the Kobe way. It's the Black Mamba mentality. Do you have it?